The Subaru Outback has never been known for straight line speed, and the new 2.5 liter version is not going to change your mind on that. However, they also offer an XT version, which adds a turbocharger and a ton more horsepower. Except, despite the critics constantly bashing the base engine, it wildly outsells the turbo motor. So, today I'm going to try to find out why that is, and I'm going to let these two duke it out to 60. Plus, since the stars have aligned, I brought a special guest here to throw into the mix, so stick around. Subscribe and hit the bell if you enjoy fun, detailed car content on vehicles from every category, new and used. Thank you. So this generation was released for the 2020 model year. Unfortunately, 2022s are extremely hard to come by right now, so both of the current generation testers I have today are 2021s. However, there is virtually no changes between either model year except for the addition of a new trim. So let's talk about where these engines are placed in the lineup. So you're going to have a total of six trims for the Subaru Outback. And in four of those trims, you're going to have this engine, the 2.5 liter, naturally aspirated Boxer 4 standard makes 182 horsepower and 176 pound-feet of torque. All Outbacks that I will show today have power rooted through a continuously variable transmission and full-time all-wheel drive. It's at least not super harsh and there's not a whole lot of vibration sent into the cabin from this engine. So this is actually the only option if you buy the base or premium spec. Above that is going to be the limited trim, which is available both base and XT motors. On top of that is the Onyx Edition, which is available only with the XT. And that spec will get durable StarTech seating, a full-size spare, and some other accents throughout. But if you really want your Outback to be serious, you'll buy the Wilderness trim, which slots above that. Both the Onyx and the Wilderness are technically based on the premium trim, and the Wilderness also is turbocharged only. However, it has a more aggressive final drive ratio, along with all-terrain tires, a skid plate, and quite a few other little upgrades thrown throughout to make it a pretty cool package, but that deserves a video on its own. Sitting on top of all of these is the Touring trim, which again will have the option for base and XT engines. All that being said, how quick is this? For this 0-60 to 60 test, I will shut off our AC, I will shut off our traction control here, and that's about all I'm going to do. Eight point seven seconds is blazing for the regular Outback, but this was actually my second run. I normally stick to one, but I got an embarrassing 10.2 seconds in similar conditions to my better run. If the CVT bogs the engine down for whatever reason at any point, the number will lack significantly. These aren't as consistent as you would think. Before we continue, I want to thank Royal on the East Side of Bloomington, Indiana for helping me put together this comparison today. Royal has a great selection of used Subarus and normally plenty of new ones too. Additionally, all of their new cars come without a dealer markup, so check them out. Acceleration here is leisurely, but more so in the chill sense than in the dangerously slow one. It perks up, you know, around the 3000 RPM range, and it is more than livable. Around town, you're really not going to have any issues with this. For passing, this works. It's just you got to give yourself more time to do it, and really the difference between like two-thirds throttle and full throttle just doesn't feel all that much due to how they tune this. It kind of tricks you into thinking that it's a little bit more peppy than it really is. Let's check out the XT. Here in the XT we're going to have a 2.4 liter boxer or flat four. This time it is turbocharged and it makes 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. So 101 more pound-feet than the regular model. When that boost kicks in, this is properly quick. And the weird thing is, is it really, you don't hear too much of the turbo part of it. So it sounds very similar to the 2.5 liter, but with just a lot more thrust. So let's, so let's see what kind of difference it'll make from zero to 60. Same settings, traction control off. Still off the line, not very much, but man. Oh, wow. 
it almost feels like more of a limitation by the CBT, you know, at the low end. Okay, so I got 5.8 seconds and... I'm having a hard time believing that's true. So I wanna try that again. Again, pretty mild there and then pulls like a mother Okay, I reset the draggy and I did it again. 5.8 seconds to 60 with the Subaru Outback XT. So where you're really gonna feel the advantage to this engine is more so just in passing power. Off the line, it's not super aggressive, but it's really like a slingshot from there. Yeah, it does take just a little bit for it to kind of get into its power band. And really the lagginess is kind of a mixture of the CVT getting situated and the turbo spooling up but it doesn't take all that long to really put the power to the ground. It really does pick up quite nicely, even without giving it a serious amount of throttle. And you still get like 30 miles to the gallon on the highway and it takes regular fuel. And if we take it up to highway speeds, this is probably one of the best cruisers out there. And honestly, I think that's a, a reason why the regular 2.5 liter also does so well because it's more than enough to cruise at 75 on the highway in the 2.5 liter. And out here on this kind of windy road, there's not a whole lot of noise. It's quiet and the seats, oh my gosh, the seats are so nice. Even though I'm six foot three, I have more than enough support and you have a thigh extender that can come out and assist your thighs. But the seats themselves are also pretty plush and they're well contoured. I think they're definitely better than the seats that are in the Forester and leagues ahead of even the seats that were in the previous generation Subaru Outback. And really, since I've kind of driven the 3.6 around a little bit lately, I've kind of noticed that this is just such a big step ahead in terms of quality when compared to that car. And now that we're out here on some more windy, rough roads, just to test out the suspension, I mean, you really begin to understand why this is such a popular mountain car, because it can take a lot of bad roads and abuse and just stay cozy, comfortable. It's not, you know, the most composed car, just because it's pretty softly sprung. When you start really flinging it around corners, there's a decent amount of body roll. But due to the low center of gravity, it can be sprung a lot softer without you know, sacrificing a lot of body control. And when you add in this torque, it really handles pretty much any road in a relaxed manner. With the 2.5 liter, you'll still go over everything. It just feels a little bit more wheezy when you want more acceleration. Another obvious reason for its mountainous popularity is the standard full-time all-wheel drive. Now, when it comes to reasons why people are choosing the turbo less than the regular car, I think there's two reasons. One is that you can't get the turbo on the base and premium, and they believe the premium trim is still the most popular spec to get the Outback in. So really the cheapest Outback XT you're gonna get is gonna run you around 37 grand, and that's gonna be in the Onyx, whereas a base Outback is only gonna cost you, you know, 28 grand. The second reason is that the turbo upgrade is over $4,000. Yeah, the performance can justify it for me, but for a lot of Outback buyers, Civic SI embarrassing speed is not a priority worth $70 a month. And the XT won't draw in a lot of sporty minded people either because there's no visual or handling differences from the regular Outback, which doesn't exactly have a heart racing reputation. Simultaneously, that makes this one hell of a sleeper. It's as if the two are twins that both wear baggy clothes clothing, but one did the One Punch Man workout routine and has seen the face of God, and the other drives a Subaru Outback. You can't tell the difference until you hit the gas. The exterior, interior, even down to the tire size, the sole difference outside of the motor is the badge, at least for the limited and touring, since the Onyx and Wilderness are XT only. Another important factor is that Subaru doesn't stock dealers with many XT models, and especially with the current shortage, you really need to want the turbo in order to get one. I think when it comes down to it, Someone who's looking at buying an Outback, they see it as it costing extra money when in reality they just don't care how quick it is. It's enough to cruise on the highway just fine, it's enough to pass people when you need to, and it's enough to put you around town. While I now have pretty much no doubt that the XT is quicker than the 3.6R, I still want to drive it. And first and foremost, this engine, its power band, the sound,
is so unique for the Subaru brand. And really just the flat six sound in here is kind of cool, but it's pretty muted most of the time. It's a refined power plant, 256 horsepower, 247 pound-feet of torque, again, 3.6 liter, flat six. AC off, traction control off. You got this, old girl. Well, uh, still not super good off the line. I was gonna say a little bit better, but a lot better sounding. Oh, she tried. So we still got a pretty respectable zero to 60 of 7.3 seconds. The launch kind of felt similar, but it really just didn't have that same pull later on like the XT did. CVT in here kicks down pretty well. I mean, it does feel pretty much as linear as the new one does. A little bit better response going for it when compared to the 2.4 liter, just because it doesn't need to spool up, but it's down on power at really every single point in the power band once the 2.4 liters spooled up. Now I'd like to hear about the people who are shopping for the new Outback XT. Are you contemplating a 3.6 liter? Let me know in the comments. If you're one of those people, as I said earlier, the quality in here is a big step down compared to the new car. It's not like the new car really handles, you know, any better in terms of steering. This is still a pretty comfortable car. I think the seats are just so much better in the new one that it's going to feel more supple but I, I don't see anybody hopping in this car and really complaining about how it drives. It's a smaller improvement in ride quality compared to just interior quality. I do like that this has physical controls. I don't have auto stop start in here too, that can get annoying. There's a few things in here that I think I just appreciate more, but overall the comparison doesn't go well for the Outback 3.6, unless you're just looking at reliability. The flat six was a proven engine with a mostly dependable CVT that had occasional torque converter failures. The ascent with the 2.4 and CVT has had more issues than average for Subarus. Time will tell if this was just a hiccup. Do take into account that maintenance on the 3.6 will likely be more tricky due to its size in the engine bay. Without going too in depth, the new Outback 2.4 5 is shaping up to be a reasonably reliable option with phenomenal resale, so I'd expect a low running cost with that one. If it's my money, I would go with the Outback Onyx or Wilderness. The aesthetic is cool, the Wilderness is crazy capable, and both will embarrass a WRX with a bad driver. If speed isn't a priority, the regular Outback is not distractingly slow in most scenarios. So my summary is that the Outback XT is surprisingly quick. The Outback is the Outback, and the 3.6 liter is a charismatic engine for Subaru, but it's no longer their quickest. Thanks for watching.